forever, we've been telling people not to use the extended ISOs on their camera. Your camera has, like in space ISO, it's usually 100, sometimes it's 160 or 200, but usually it's 100. And then it will have extended ISOs below that, like ISO 50. And if you shoot raw, and you should be if you care about image quality and stuff, then those extended ISOs, all they do is they take in a picture at your base ISO and then basically overexpose it to stop, but then correct for that in post. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. Think of it this way. If you take a picture in RAW at ISO 100 on this camera, and then you take a picture at ISO 50 with the same shutter speed and aperture, it's gonna be the exact same picture even though you change the ISO. All that's happening is a completely software adjustment. The RAW file itself will have exactly the same information in it. So because it was the same, for the longest time we recommended people not use it. After all, why would you? All you're doing is essentially giving up a stop of dynamic range in the highlights. Well, I finally figured out a good reason to do that. It, it won't make any difference if you're the type who very carefully looks at your histogram and measures everything perfectly, but I realize most people don't do that, including me. I was shooting at the base ISO, but not overexposing it when I could. Now, by using the extended low ISO, I found I can reduce the noise in base ISO images by a full stop, producing much cleaner pictures. Let's take a couple of pictures to demonstrate. Okay, you're not gonna see any difference at a glance, but if you zoom way in, you'll see that noise is visible in the sky at both ISO 50 and ISO 100. However, the ISO 50 image has less noise, right about half, and that makes sense because the shutter was open twice as long because the ISO was half the speed. YouTube's compression will hide some of the noise, so I cranked up the contrast to make the difference more noticeable. If you're the type who feels their images are noise-free at the base ISO, this technique won't matter to you. But if you make big prints and you want the most perfect image possible, doubling the optimal image quality for free with no post-processing is pretty exciting. Now, you might not notice that on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, but if you're the type who cares about your image quality and you're making a big print, it's gonna make a difference. Increasing the exposure three stops to test the dynamic range and recovered shadows, we again see that the ISO 50 image is noticeably cleaner. The extended ISO would lose dynamic range in heavily overexposed highlights, so check your histogram and be careful about clipping. While you're clipping off a stop of overexposure in the highlights, you're gaining a stop of dynamic range in the shadows. So you won't be able to recover the highlights as much, but you'll be able to recover the shadows more, and for most people, that's more important. Here's an example with more extreme dynamic range. I exposed for the highlights, leaving most of the image in deep shadow. The extra noise in the ISO 100 image is obvious. Even though I used a 50 megapixel 5DSR, all cameras will show the same relative improvement to optimal image quality. For detailed information about dynamic range, visit sdp.io slash dynamic range. For detailed information about ISO, visit sdp.io slash ISO. Just a quick tip, I hope it helps to improve your images. Subscribe for, to our channel for lots more videos. Give me a like. If you have questions or comments, add a comment down below. Thanks.